Learning how to identify a tree based on its foliage is very useful year-round for evergreen trees and useful for most of the year for deciduous trees. If you're working with a deciduous tree in the winter, you'll have to combine your knowledge of other features like the overall form, branch architecture, bark characteristics, and so on. For the purposes of this video, I'm assuming that you know how to distinguish a simple leaf versus a compound leaf. I have another video discussing this. Foliage generally just refers to the leaves, the needles, the photosynthetic organs that help the tree make energy and make sugars. First, grab a twig and let's talk about leaf arrangement. Recall that leaves are attached to the stem at a node. In alternate leaf arrangements, you only have one leaf per node and they alternate along the stem. Here is an example of opposite leaf arrangement. This is an ash and you can see one bud on either side of this node. As those grow out into branches, the opposite arrangement becomes even more obvious. Here's what that will look like in the future. If you encounter a species with opposite arrangement, you're in luck because the list of options has just gotten a lot smaller. Trees with alternate arrangements are so much more common that there's a mnemonic to help you remember the ones that have opposite arrangements. The mnemonic I've heard is Mad Horse. The M stands for maple, the A for ash, the D for dogwood, and horse for horse chestnut. One caveat is that the E does stand for ash, but all the species in that family, the Oleaceae, also have opposite attachments. You can also have multiple leaves per node, more than two, and that gives you a world leaf arrangement. This is not at all common with trees, but can be used for other plants. Here are the basic parts of the blade of this leaf. You have the base here, which is what was attached to the stem. You have the tip or the apex and this edge along both sides that's called the margin. The study guide only has two terms highlighted. They have entire, meaning smooth. You can see that this margin has no interruptions in it. Here is the base section with a few of the more common terms. Oblique is one that you might encounter with a Zelkova or some elm species where the base, the bottom of that blade there is not symmetrical. You have a truncate flat bottomed base. Um, this is the apex section. This talks about what kind of tips, what the leaf tip might look like. Some really do come to this tiny little tip there and the rest of the tip, the rest of the apex is rounded. So all of this will help you narrow down the species that you're looking at. So here is what the book defines as serrate. You have teeth directed towards the apex of the leaf. And then you can also have doubly serrate. You have entire here. And this lobe is used fairly generally. So this is a really good book. I really enjoyed looking through it. I enjoyed learning from it. But obviously, at this point, this goes beyond what an arborist needs to know. Up till now, I've mainly discussed the leaf shapes and features of broadleaf trees. Conifers have slightly different leaves. Their foliage can be described in three ways. You have needles, all shaped, and scale-like foliage. The needles are pretty straightforward. They're long, they're long, they're skinny, and they can come in several different shapes. You have you have redwood needles, which are flatter and shorter. You may have cedar needles, which are shorter and attached in larger bundles on a stem. 
on scale like foliage was analogous to a single leaf is actually these really small overlapping scales and all like foliage is pointy sometimes you may have two of these foliage types on the same tree hollywood juniper is a good example the juvenile foliage is all shaped and the mature foliage becomes scale like make sure when you're looking at branches and twigs and leaves and anything like that you take more than one sample you might have a weird leaf you might have a branch that was broken off one side but not the other so it's important to get a more holistic idea of what you're looking at instead of one potential unusual specimen the scope of this video and the study guide is fairly limited in terms of the entire realm of tree id the key principle to keep in mind is to make as many observations as possible look at every single thing write down anything that you think might possibly help you distinguish that leaf from another leaf even if you don't think it's important yet 